about a year ago, I bought a 3D printer and I like to 3D print stuff and I like to put magnets in those 3D prints. And how I've been doing that up until now is with this little wrench that came with the 3D printer and it's kind of a good size for it because sometimes the space you have is not the most accessible and it's made of steel, so magnets stick to it even when you don't want them to. So in order to fix that, I printed this which is a little magnet pen that I can use to pick up a magnet and then press this button and push it in. And I would like to show you how it works and how I put it together. So I'm going to show you how the internals of this work by assembling the second version. First of all, we have the outer shell, which has some heat set inserts. And here is some magnets because the spring action that I'm using, instead of using actual springs, I thought, why not use magnets? Because magnets are cool, and I like magnets a lot. Magnets are fascinating. And then here we have the top shell, which has also a little cutout for the button. You can also see it has some holes and pins to align them correctly, so they slot into each other nicely. And then there's some holes in here for the screws. And in the bottom plate, there is a little circle. This will serve as like an axle for the gear that's going to be in the center. So we start by putting down the bottom plate. And then we get our little gear. On the inside of this gear, there's a little cutout that can go right over that. And it can rotate freely, which is nice. Then we have the first arm that sits inside the shell. As you can see, it has some gears here in the center. This interfaces with the circle gear at the bottom. as kind of a rack and pinion type system. Then in the top of the button, we have some magnets that are inserted in opposite polarity to the magnets in here. So they will act like a spring. You will see this function in a second. And then at the front, there's this part, which is hollow. And this is where the magnet will get pushed when we push it down into the new 3D prints. So let's place this into the shell very carefully to engage with the gears correctly. And as you can see, it sits nicely the top of this flat part sitting against the edge of the shell, the gear teeth engage, and now these magnets are acting like a spring. So if we then push this in and then let it go, you can see it automatically wants to spring out and jump back, which is good. And this here at the bottom, it's lined up perfectly with the flat side of the shell, so we can place it flat on any 3D prints we're inserting it into. Now we have the second arm. Again, it has some gears to engage with the circle gear. Except this time, instead of an empty part, it has a little post with a magnet at the front, which is small enough to fit into the hollow part here at the front. So we're going to insert that, rotate it to the top, and then when it's correctly oriented, we push it into the gears at the bottom there. Oh, I went the one too far. There we go. And then if we push this, you can see the button is pushed down and the magnet goes back, right? So it creates a distance between the magnetic field of this and the magnet that we have on this button. So this button pushes it down and then the magnet that's holding it in place moves away and it releases it, which is perfect, exactly what we want. So then we put this on. It has some um, some guides at the side, some rails, and the alignment pins to make sure it sits in place. And then we have little M2, I think it's M2 screws that we just screw in. My hands are obstructing this, but I assure you we're screwing it in. So yeah, you want it to be engaged, but not too tight, because if you screw it too tight, it'll bind and it won't be able to freely move. Screw that in. Give them a little quarter turn for tightening. And now you should be able to push the button. As you can see, it's binding slightly. It's a little bit too tight. So that last little quarter turn is probably too much. Just undo it a little bit like that. And now it no longer binds and it will freely move. I have made two of these, one for each magnet polarity because I cannot change the magnets once they're in there. So if I want a positive or like north magnet at the top, I use this one. If I want a negative one, I use this one. And you might say, how do you know which magnet's which? Well, I printed this nifty little stick that has a bunch of magnets embedded in it. It has a little plus on one side 
and a little minus on the other side. So if I need to test the magnet for printing, I just get some magnets and I put them on here and then I can have the correct orientation for how I need them to be in the print. And you might think, how did you figure all this out? Because there was definitely some testing involved. And I got the idea when I was working on something else. I was working on like camera hoods with like magnetic lens caps, right? And I made this thing, this was like version two or three, I think. And then I put it like this and I was doing like this. And I was like, ooh, that's kind of like a spring. And then I started Googling around and actually like NASA and space engineers use magnet springs all the time. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm not, not quite as smart as I thought I was, but that's fine. I didn't invent something new, but I did stumble upon something cool. And then like eight months later, that turned into, into these bad boys. So um, yeah, that was pretty fun. So at first I printed this little guy, which was a little gauge to see how far a magnet spring would actually like hold the magnet up with a little guide on the side it's very hard to see in this black PLA, but there's little notches in here so I could just measure in millimeters how far it would go. So I knew how to, uh, how to set up the tolerances correctly. And I printed these little test buttons, which is just uh, a very simplified version of the system at the top, which will just like push in and work as a little magnet spring. And these are fun little fidget toys, but they also, uh, they were a nice little test. So that's it. These are my magnet pens. I will put a link below to my website where you can download the files and I'll tell you whatever hardware and magnets you need to get so you can print one for yourself. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.